Uh, hello everybody and welcome to another video. I may be talking a little bit different today because I have this like incredible cough and it's so bad um, and I do apologize if I end up coughing uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get through this. Um, but I also noticed something today. I noticed something about um, the information that's been releasing with Heart of Thorns and this is um, that there's a lot of small things going on that uh, a few of you guys out there, or most of you who only really saw the initial PAX announcement, maybe you only saw the trailer, won't be in the loop about. So I'm going out on a limb here, and I'm going to try and keep you guys in the loop with all the small things happening right now. This is basically a Tuesday news day, except that will be coming tomorrow. Don't forget that tomorrow in Guild Wars 2 regular, uh, there will be a patch which we should be covering um, in due time. Also, it is my plans... Uh, for Heart of Thorns to talk in depth about each of these features, like a video dedicated to each one about on specializations, on the Revenant, and so forth. Um, but for today, let's have a look at all the extra things you may not know about that have been occurring. Um, and the first main one that I really want to bring people's attention to, in case you haven't even looked, um, is there is a huge new section on the Guild Wars 2 website, as you can see here. Uh, dedicated to Heart of Thorns announcing the first Guild Wars 2 expansion pack. And this does actually talk a little bit about some things that they hadn't established at the initial panel, okay? We also get some assets, some of the artwork here that we didn't see before. Namely, already you'll see in the background, we've got Ritlock on the right, Kaith on the left. And they seem to set up, not in the Heart of Thorns trailer, but certainly for the trailer at the end of Season 2, that there'll be some kind of Silvari conflict. Ritlock didn't like the Silvari. Does this mean he's going to be at loggerheads with Kaith as a part of the story? If this is, you know, the big backdrop, the big piece of art depicting the story in general, maybe this is going to be a big thing. You know, I might even expect, I could, could I be so bold as to say, we may see another trailer in coming months, which uh, sort of shows Kaith's journey and what she's doing with the egg, as opposed to uh, Ritlock's journey and what he's been doing in the mists, or as he's just come out of the mists. Anyway, so this is a good place for you guys to keep up to date for information. If you're not watching this channel regularly for Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, um, you can subscribe, of course, just like you could pre-launch, and they'll give you emails about, in particular, stuff like betas. So as we scroll down here, they read Guild Wars 2, Heart of Thorns. Heart of Thorns is the first expansion pack for Guild Wars 2. Founded on the idea that the journey is the goal, Heart of Thorns expansion continues the Guild Wars 2 tradition of challenging the conventions of MMOs to fulfill the promise of what online world should be. Now, a lot of this is going to seem like marketing speak, but certain things we can pick up, like this, uh, the idea here. It says, founded on the idea that the journey is the goal. They're uh, referencing here what they used to talk about a lot before the game came out, how it wasn't about um, having a whole different game at end game, right? Getting to level 80 should feel just as fun as the stuff you do at level 80. And I think many of us in the community have lost perspective of this, especially, you know, when we get into discussions about how the end game in Guild Wars 2 is structured. Journey deep into the heart of Thorns. Uh, they talk here about the mastery system. We're reimagining progression with our new mastery system. Explore new training opportunities for your character beyond level 80 and master abilities like hang gliding in the jungle, tearing the bark off of heavily armored Mordrum, or building new collections that earn precursors to a legendary weapon. So this whole precursor scavenger hunt thing, they're actually including as they discuss the mastery system. This is interesting to me. They also reference collections. I wonder how those will interact quite into the mastery system. But here is an example they never gave on the day. And this is how it may tie into combat stuff too. Um, being able to tear into heavily armored Mordrum. So again, the whole idea, guys, of masteries <clears throat> is it replaces... That idea of having to level up, right? So, uh, what is one of the main things we like the feeling of as we level in RPGs, okay? As, you know, the level cap has increased in expansion. We like uh, being able to see enemies that are far too dangerous for us. We go off, we have our montage, we level up, we find the motivation to level so that we can then go and kill them. And um, this is very, very telling to me. It suggests that as we explore deeper into the jungle... Even though all the content is level 80 content, if you try to run like six maps deep in, you're going to start getting annihilated by enemies. You're not going to be able to do any damage to them. You're not going to have the right counters to their abilities. And you're just going to get destroyed. And so it's going to feel a lot like, hey, these are level 90 enemies. Now, it's not exactly the same as that. And it won't invalidate already existing content in the game, even with the downscaling system in Guild Wars 2. So that's kind of the way it will work. As we progress, we want to learn different things so that we can actually get this armor off of them so we can start doing damage. Or vice versa, we can build our own defenses against them. It was also confirmed, by the way, that uh, the mastery system will have impact and effect other existing maps in Guild Wars 2. It is not exclusive to just the jungle. This isn't a very exciting example to me 
of what the uh, mastery system could achieve through combat. So I'm hoping for some more examples. They did refuse to talk about it too much on the day, which would suggest there's something more substantive there, right? Anyway, so down we go. We get more concept art. A lot of this stuff is very lovely. I actually have a folder that ArenaNet gave me filled with lots of um, really, really impressive looking concept art. Here's another golden-ish looking city. <clears throat> I probably would have been a fool uh, if this had come out before the expansion was revealed. I've been talking to you guys about how this looked like Kaineng City and oh my god it could be Kantha. But no, um, who knows where this is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be one of the Masat ruins deep within the jungle? Uh, here it says, the heart of Maguma. New adventures await you in the heart of the Maguma jungle. Confront the growing hordes of Mordemoth minions. Discover allies from ancient civilizations. Allies from ancient civilizations. Again, suggesting the Masat will be on side for us. Incredibly potent idea to me. Battle new enemies. Tackle challenging group content. Um, there has been a little bit of fear out there that I have seen and I can agree with that uh, ArenaNet didn't talk about dungeons. They didn't talk about fractals. They didn't squarely point the idea of raids at us. So um, it, it seems like they're not putting it to the forefront. One of my main predictions about what we'd see at PAX is the idea that they would discuss challenging content, that they would have something to impress us veterans. Those of us, like the members of my guild that desperately want difficult world bosses, things like this, they didn't say any of it. But we are seeing the statement come up time and time again, at least tackle challenging group content. Does this mean simply that they know they want it in the game? but they haven't nailed down exactly how it will work? Or, or does it mean that it really is going to be a lackluster feature for the expansion? This is a big, a big fear and I think a well justified one. Explore new open world jungle maps. Experience new events and storylines. Test your metal in new boss battles. New events and storylines. Um, they never talk to us really at all about the way the personal story will be structured here, right? I'm uh, guessing we're just going to get a huge chunk of stuff come back into the game. Is there going to be race-specific storylines? Is there going to be importance on orders again? Are we going to ma be making a million different choices that ultimately don't mean anything? They didn't tell us any of this stuff, but there are more storylines. Uh, I think it would be ludicrous to, to think of an expansion dropping and not a whole bul bulk of story come with it, you know? The nightmare to me, a guildie mentioned to me this idea, um, the nightmare is that they just drop the uh, expansion in, it gives us the new areas and features, but there's no plot, and then we have to wait two weeks for all the plot forevermore? No, 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 no. That would be very, very scary to me. My dream for the way the storylines work is, I've always said time and time again, if anyone's been following the channel for a long while, you'll know this about me, I prefer stories that do not really have many choices for us as the player. I prefer um, being able to make decisions in RPGs based around, you know, combat and stuff. That's where I get my joy. I think if they craft a single, perfect, beautiful narrative experience, I prefer that than, you know, having all these branches that ultimately dilute the experience. And uh, even with that said, though, I think my dream for the way Heart of Thorns could be structured would be uh, we get a whole bulk of story come back. We get the first chunk of it um, specific to our race. So, you know, Char characters will experience different story than uh, Asura characters will. That goes up to a point, and then I, I think the best thing they could do is just have three totally separate, almost, but they'll crisscross, um, main storylines, uh, each from a different, from the perspective of a different order. So if you pick Dermond Priory, you get just like this one long story chain of Dermond Priory's experience in this war. If you go and play um, now on your Order of Whispers character, again, you get a different story. Maybe the uh, factions interact every now and then, but I think that would be amazing. I don't need any more choice than that. I don't need to choose whether this minor character I'm never going to see again is actually going to die or be saved at the cost of, you know, many other lives that I don't know. I don't need any of that stuff. I just want these big, distinct stories. But hey, that's just my speculation, what I'd like to see. I'm curious what you guys would like to see with the way they'll drop the story in bulk. Again, this is information we didn't get. Test your metal in new boss battles. Um, here we get something pretty cool. The classic... Um, a uh, profession screen. Look at this thing. This is awesome. So here we have the, uh, as far as I remember, this is the way it was structured. The engineer, the thief, the necromancer. We used to pour over this constantly. This one image out of all others for pre-launch of Guild Wars 2 was poured over so much. Necromancer, elementalist, warrior, ranger, guardian. And this here is the mesmer. Um, you might be tempted to think, oh, this is the revenant. They actually didn't add the revenant to this image. I would love them to do that at some point, though. Um, and as down here, where it says specializations. Above your gameplay, with profession specializations, you'll unlock access access to a pr weapon previously unavailable to your profession, as well as new traits, skills, and unique mechanics, all of which will transform your profession into something new. We get some art of a revenant, 
I don't believe this is supposed to be um, like a specific character of any kind. The blindfold, though, you can see is definitely a theme of this uh, this profession here. And uh, channel legendary powers to slaughter foes and unleash chaos on the battlefield with our brand new profession, the Revenant. Enter the field of battle heavily armored and equipped with the otherworldly powers of the mist. No more uh, discussion here for us of some of the other heroes we could perhaps be able to channel. We get uh, a little bit on guild halls. Your guild has roamed the world together. Now it's time to claim a piece of it. Work with fellow guild members to claim and grow your own guild hall in the heart of Maguma. So um, this is one of the primary places we're actually getting uh, a bit of discussion about the idea of uh, building them up with blueprints and so forth. Uh, there was actually a tweet from one of the developers, which I'll read to you guys now. This is some of that news. Um, and it was from John Ryan, who said just today, Guild Halls, baby. Happy to say I'm working on the narrative for it. So um, what this confirms to us, at least, is there's some kind of narrative story going on with the Guild Halls. And that's curious to me. I wonder if it's just, you know, some excuse for how we buy them or whatever. Or something more involved, perhaps. Uh, we got the new PvP maps and concept art we've seen before. Gather supplies to hire soldiers. Battle for control of heroes. Man the Treb. Haven't talked on the channel about the Treb. Yes, Trebuchet is going to be a big component of this map. Um, we saw some of the early designs for the map, too, a while ago. And there were Trebs marked on there. Storm the enemy gates to defeat the Guild Lords. Use our new Guild Team feature to team up and battle to the top of the leaderboards. Another feature I never mentioned on the channel. Uh, this is the idea that within your Guild you can like form a proper team and then yes they will have the leaderboard system there as they explain stronghold offers an entirely new way to play competitive pvp in guild or two people are still questioning how many players this will be i automatically assumed it would be 5v5 but this is not necessarily the way it will go i would say from what we at least saw in the trailer it looked like there were maybe five people fighting one another but there's nothing to say that those five people we saw fighting one another in the trailer in the central courtyard were the only people on the map. You know, there could have been stuff going on elsewhere because it does look pretty expensive. Um, here we got the new World versus World Borderland. Again, giving us another really nice shot. This is um, actually an in-game screenshot in the background instead of concept art like the rest of them are using. And here you can very clearly see the structure here. One thing I haven't talked about is how reminiscent this floating giant pyramid cube thing looks to the crazy dream messed up thing we experienced in Fractals of the Mists. And is it a bit presumptuous for me to think that perhaps this is the same place? This is what we saw in Fractals of the Mist, just at a different time perhaps? It was the World vs. World Borderland. That would be very curious. And the Fractal, of course, would have taken place right up here, floating in the sky. Uh, World vs. World New Borderland. Experience epic battlefield combat like never before. World vs. World Latest Core Edition, blah, 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 blah. Uh, navigate treacherous heights with traps that blow your foes to the depths below. Uh, this traps idea, you guys remember the Obsidian Sanctum. Great idea, cool place, fell... Um, completely off of my radar for Guild Wars 2 a long, long time ago. I think it's one of those big sort of uh, features that it's a shame isn't promoted more. Uh, it sounds kind of like, hey, imagine if we had the Obsidian Sanctum as just a giant map. Uh, for World vs. World. Go ahead and uh, and have fun. Uh, map objectives will be more important than ever before. They'll unlock new strategies, tactics, and play mechanics you'll want to use for your world advantage. So we don't hear anything about that. Um, so that's pretty much it. You'll be able to look at this page for new, uh, extra news as it comes out. But I did want to go and show you guys the official page. I do think it's an important place to check out. Um, there is also a Q&A on GuildWars2.com, which um, I want to read to you guys as well. This is the thing that addresses, in particular, the idea that betas will exist. This wasn't something I'd really thought about so um, these are just some very simple questions many people have been asking uh, question number two on the list straight away will you be offering an early access beta yes although we don't have details to release at the present time so that will be happening um, and again this kind of excites me because there's been a big part of my brain I guess with this expansion though I'm hyped for it I'm worried it's gonna be too small and then the idea that it's obviously going to have its own beta and stuff kind of brings that scope and that scale back, right? Is the expansion buy to play? Uh, Heart of Thorns is a paid expansion. Once you buy it, though, there's no sub fees. Um, and then you get all the updates for free. So totally looks like completely 100% bog standard expansion pack style business model here. Uh, they explain, yes, you do need Guild Wars 2 to play the expansion. This suggests that they're not going to just roll the base game into it for free, which was a speculation many of us had. Um, and then they talk a little bit about the features and stuff. There is no pricing announced. We're all, of course, expecting about $50. Uh, Matt was, in particular, um, concerned there wouldn't be, like, a boxed version we can buy. Well, this question here addresses that. Will there be a boxed edition as well? Both, yes, there will. Once it's available, you'll be able to buy it digitally. They haven't announced anything about... Um, collector's edition, but I would assume they would. I mean, they've always, as a company, done collector's editions. Um, so that's pretty much it. One thing I did also find interesting I wanted to show you guys was how the Chinese, Kongzong, so Kongzong are the guys that run the Chinese side of things, how they announced the expansion. It's like kind of buried on the main website. I don't know. 
It's kind of curious to me. It's, you know, just sort of a bullet point list. Here's the trailer with some subtitles. Obviously, I can't translate this, but it doesn't look... And a QR code here. Doesn't actually look like too much is going on on their side of things. Uh, if anyone knows how, like, reception to this is going on, there's a Reddit thread currently uh, with people discussing the idea. And I would be very curious because we're seeing so much over in the West. Um, it may have given, so followed, some of you guys might have thought, oh, maybe they don't get it for another year in China because they released later than us. But no, they get it around about the same time too. I'm actually a bit jealous of the Chinese player base, honestly. Even though Kong Zong may have messed things up a little here and there, Actually, they sort of got to play at launch a really cool game with a lot of features, you know, the Fruits of Fru Feature Pack 1 and 2 together at launch. They had like ascended stuff in the game and then they didn't even have a big long wait for an expansion. So, um, yeah, hopefully the audience there is doing quite well, but honestly, I couldn't say too much. Other news uh, before we roll down here, um, there is a lot of speculation going on right now with regards to the after party. Um, that uh, the players of the community got to go and interact with various developers. And at this after party, um, a few things were said, but we can't really corroborate a lot of the information. It has now been confirmed, though, 100%. Yes, there will only be one specialization per class. Okay, so it sounded like maybe there should be two, because how is it specializing if there's only one? Isn't it just developing? But here's the way it works, guys. Um, it's sort of specializing, because when you specialize, you do take things away from your base class. Uh, the trait page will change. It sounds like uh, at least one trait line could just be completely removed for you, and a new one would instead be added. And if you think about the traits work, every profession's got like that special trait line that affects their unique profession mechanics. So for Elementalist, it reduces their attunement recharge rates. For Necromancer, it's a lot of stuff to do with the life force. So maybe this is the thing that that is going to be removed and then it will be replaced with something else. So there is still reason to run the default classes, okay? And so in a way, it's like we have two specializations. You know, we'll have the Ranger and the Druid. But um, when Heart of Thorns comes out, yes, it's only one specialization. Kind of sad. That was the main thing we've heard a lot at from the after party. Um, and as things are actually confirmed, I will give you guys more information on many of the things that are coming out from there. But if you hear stuff like, oh, hey, Electrum ingots will be coming into the game and they're used for precursor crafting and stuff. Just remember, even though someone's saying to you, oh, a dev told me this at the after party, we don't know it for sure. And uh, we'll kind of have to sit tight. And some of that stuff can look quite exciting. Anyway, that's about it, guys. Let me know whether you enjoyed this kind of thing. This is like filling in the cracks. You know, these are all the little pieces of information that I feel like if I don't do a video on, talk to you guys about them, then... Um, you know, a lot of you will just end up in the dark. So that's pretty much that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I have had a bit of a, uh, a crazy voice thing going on today. Um, and I will get to work on those very specific feature videos um, for you tomorrow. And uh, just so that everyone's aware as well, it is very much on my plans to recap Living World Season 1 and 2. Basically, all the plot that happened after the defeat of Zaitan up until Heart of Thorns releases. So right here, you should be able to fill yourselves in just like you could feel yourself in on the channel before launch with the uh, original lore series. Hope that sounds good, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.